and hello, friends. We welcome you to another episode of Chapters here on Armstrong Television. Chapters is the show that profiles authors, editors, and publishers in the tri-states of Kentucky, Ohio, and West Virginia. I'm Elliot Parker, and it's great to have you with us. We are talking poetry and fiction and all things writing with Laura Bentley today. And Laura Bentley joins us as a poet, novelist, point-and-shoot photographer, and native West Virginian. She's born in Hagerstown, Maryland, and she's lived most of her life in Huntington. She divides her time between the mountains of West Virginia and a cabin in Western Maryland. She's the author of the latest book, Looking for Ireland, an Irish Appalachian Pilgrimage, which is both a chap poetry chapbook and an art book. She's also the author of The Silver Tattoo, a psychological thriller set in Ireland, Night Terrors, a short story prequel to The Silver Tattoo, and Lake Effect, which is a poetry collection. Her work has been widely published in the United States and Ireland in literary journals such as the New York Quarterly, Art Times, Poetry Ireland Review, Antietam Review, Rosebud, Blink, Ginseng, Wind, the Stinging Fly, Kestrel, ABZ, and other journals. She received a fellowship award from literature for literature from the West Virginia Commission on the Arts, and her poetry has been featured on the websites of A Prairie Home Companion, Poetry Daily, and O Magazine. In 2003, she was honored and awarded the Writer in Residence for the Marshall University Writing Project and has taught creative writing at the 2013 West Virginia Governor's School for the Arts. And so we're very delighted to welcome back Laura Bentley to the program. Laura, welcome. Good to see you. Hey, Elliot. <laughs> you were our very first Chapters guest. I was. Back in August of 2013. That's right. I was the guinea pig. You, right? were, you were. You were our <laughs> trial balloon guest. And so it's so good to have you back and to follow up with you and check in with you about what you've been up to since we talked oh, to you well, then. It's great to be back. And I, and I remember the first time that I ever met you was at the, West, at the Marshall University Writing Project. And we were talking poetry at the time. I, I remember sitting down and looking at a poem that you had written. Yep, and I was so nervous when we met that first time, and I thought, oh, no, she's going to she's gonna throw my poem out into the trash. I don't do that. But she was, it was great. It was great. We've been friends ever since. Okay, it's good. Been, so it's been great. Um, I wanted to ask you um, about, and we'll talk about both um, Looking for Ireland and also The Silver Tattoo, but with those two works, your your writing has taken sort of uh, an affinity or, or connection to Ireland and Irish culture. Mm -hmm. where, where did that come from? Is that something you've always been interested in? Or how did that theme of Ireland kind of work its way into those two, or the setting of Ireland work its way into those two works? Yeah. Um, probably since I was a kid, I knew that my dad's father, my grandfather, was born in Ireland, and it was something celebrated in the family. And, you know, it was just something like, you know, uh, the Pacific Ocean, I never knew I would ever go there, you know, I, I was here. Um, and so anyway, it was talked about a lot. And so always kind of like uh, romanticized, I guess I, I would say. And I wrote an essay, I think in junior high school, about wanting to go to Ireland. And I don't know. So then, you know, you get on with the business of going to school and going, I went to Marshall and, and, uh, and got married and had kids and and you know somewhere along the line there um, there was a, a window of opportunity to go to apply to go to a workshop in Ireland in Dublin and I went and then a few, three years later it came in intervals of about three years three years later I, there was another window of opportunity and that was to uh, study with Billy Collins in Galway Ireland and then the third time, I was writer in residence uh, on the west coast of Ireland in County Clare. And there was a fourth time, but the first three were, you know, got under your skin. And I, and I kept journals and I took photographs. And um, I didn't really write anything until the writing residency. And then I wrote poems, and I wrote a poem a night as self-discipline, you know, because there's no one hanging over you with a, a ruler saying you have to <laughs> turn in your poem in the morning. And I did. I wrote a number of poems, and I also walked to the Cliffs of Moor almost every day. So all these things were happening. And then, uh, and then when I got home, I, I framed some of those pictures that I'd taken, and then I walked down the hallway past a few of them, and Anyway, that, that's history, and then eventually I wrote a short story 
that turned into the silver tattoo. So all those things of, of, of you know, all the things you soak in when you go to a foreign country, especially when you go alone mm -hmm. and you're female, uh, everything is sort of magnified. And uh, all that got in there. And then I went back about three years ago with a friend and got to go to Northern Ireland and got to return to the cliffs after the book had been published, the red, the silver tattoo. And um, so that was uh, euphoric almost to be able to go back because I had been there in 2000. And so I went back in 2014. So long story short is, is uh, Irish ancestry in the family always wanting to go, never having enough money in my family for us to go really anywhere. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, um, these windows of opportunity appeared. And I also will give cr huge credit to the West Virginia Commission on the Arts, because I had applied for, uh, you know, a fellowship award, individual fellowship, and and I won. I was one of a number of people who won different categories. And I used that money to go to Ireland. That's great. That's great. So West Virginia has really helped me on this journey. And now I'm going on this poetic journey. This is another thing that I always wanted to do was to have a different kind of chat book. You know? and, and I take photographs for fun. I'm a point and shoot photographer. and. And it just sort of merged, and I decided I would do it. Uh, put, put some poems together with some photographs that I'd taken. And then this book came out, and it's been well received so far. Uh, so, it's, and, it, and it's a journey. It's a pilgrimage, kind of like the, the journeys that I made to Ireland the first few times. And then this is like a long walk from Appalachia to Ireland. And you know, one of the things that's interesting about about your your chat book, looking for Ireland, is is we see some of the we see some of the beauty. We see some of the same land, uh, not the same landscapes, but we see that that natural beauty in Ireland that we see in Appalachia. Mm -hmm. and, and I know that you've written a lot uh, about Appalachia, and I love the Cliffs of Moher in your in mm. your in your book. I think I think that is one of my favorite one of my favorite images oh. um, because it it just stands out, but it doesn't look like. Um, sort of the the travel brochure picture, right. Uh, right. which you know I get a sense that that you were really there. This wasn't a stock photo. This was yeah. something that oh, you yeah. really got to experience. Yeah. Um, what is it about that place? Because I, I know so many people that have been to Ireland, and you've been several times that mm -hmm. that say being on those cliffs is so special. Yeah. What is it when you're there that makes it so unique and really kind of burns an impression yeah. in your mind? Well, um, the uh, cliffs jut into the, the ocean and they're huge and they're massive and they're dramatic and beautiful and scary and all those things. Uh, the weather is very unpredictable there because it's right smack beside the ocean and you can have uh, really high winds where they have to say no visitors can come. <laughs> <laughs> you can literally be lifted off your feet. Mm -hmm. um, the panoramas are beautiful. Uh, I wrote about in, in my novel the sunsets are glorious and it stays lighter you know in Ireland mm -hmm. um, so at 10 10 30 at night you would go to watch the sunset if you could and if if they weren't in total cloud cover and if there wasn't a gale <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah it's I think it's wild and dramatic and scary and beautiful all wrapped up in one and as much as they try to make it as safe as possible, and they do. Uh, it, you know, you, there's only so much you can do. Um, there's memorials posted in different places on as you walk around the cliffs to people who've lost their lives there from, for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty dramatic, and and I started thinking about that too. Uh, so that got that actually got into to the novel and. And a couple key scenes at the Cliffs of Moher because I'd spent so much time there. Mm -hmm. I did want to say um, Wallace Stevens, back to poetry just for a second, Wallace Stevens would wrote a beautiful poem about the Cliffs of Moher, which I really, really admire and uh, 
all respect. But then I found out later that he'd never been. Interesting. He'd never been. And I don't think a writer has to always go to these places. They go there in their imagination sometimes. Um, and the woman who wrote Highlander, I forget, Gabaldon, is mm -hmm. that? Yeah. yeah. The first book in that Highlander series, she had never been to Scotland. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with research and uh, transporting your readers there requires an intense imagination, I think. But I'm no Wallace Stevens, but I thought, I've been there, and I love it, and I want to write a poem, too. And that, and I did, and, and that's beside the, the dark, brooding photograph that I took in 2000. Yeah. I put that beside it. Because when, when I got your book, that was the first picture I looked for. I wanted to say, oh, is there Cliff's Moore? Oh, like, oh yeah, yes, uh, they are. Yeah. So it caught my attention <laughs> there it immediately. Is. So it's, a, it's, a, great, it, it's a, great, a great photo, and I'm glad. And the backstory is really interesting, too. Thanks. Uh, another poem I really liked in, in your chat book is the Went Missing poem. Uh, and I, I, know, I know that you write about, in your poetry collection, Lake Effect, uh, you know, not that you always write a lot about uh, people going missing, right. but, but th there is a sense of people moving out of other people's lives or, or leaving for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they come back, sometimes they don't. Mm -hmm. um, and I love the, the, the line, Inishir floats like vapor, seaside lights are sequined far below, silence steals from horizon to dark um. horizon in terms of, of, of went missing. So tell us a little bit of, uh, about that poem, kind of what's going on there, because that was one of my favorites oh. in your chapbook. Well, thank you very much. Um, I think it's when you fall in love with landscape or or a country, or a place, or a person, or whatever it is, um, that you just sort of merge into the landscape, and you want to. You, you, f you just sort of disappear inside it for a while, and and I was like a missing person, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when, especially when you're on. Uh, you know, thousands of miles from your home, and you're by yourself, and you're wandering around <laughs> and taking long walks, and <laughs> and t totally enjoying it. But you just feel like you have been um, immersed into the green, the coolness, the autumn temperatures, which are very much like uh, Garrett County. I just came back from Garrett County, Maryland, and and there's some of the photos in there are in here are from Garrett County, but, you know, the same mountainous, cool temperatures pretty much year-round in both places, and and how so many Irish Americans and Scottish Americans and people with a Celtic heritage ended up in, in that part of our country, Appalachia, and how it felt like home. And so I could see that. You know, I really could see that where they could sort of disappear. Mm -hmm. They had to leave everything that they had for one reason or another to get a job or to keep from starving to death or just for a better opportunity. And then it would, might have been easier for them to go missing mm -hmm. in Appalachia. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it, it, was, it was great. And I, I, I liked it because, it, you know, it pulled you in, but... Th th there was such a strong connection to place and, and, and where you are, not just in that poem, but right. kind of wherever you are or where you are when you're reading that poem that was really, yeah. really strong, and I really, yeah. really liked it. Well, that. And, and those poems always take me back to that moment when I wrote it yeah. and that and that feeling. I think that's the beauty of poetry is that you just sort of capture something. It's, not, it's you know, it's a feeling and, a, and a, um, oh, it's p deeply personal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so you feel it. And you, and you always return to that feeling again. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Another poem I really liked, um, and I hope I read this correctly and interpreted <laughs> it correctly, and you can tell me if I didn't, okay. but it is uh, Swans, Tundra Swans. Oh. Mm -hmm. And it, to me it read like like a Greek mythology story, like, mm -hmm. like one of the old Zeus, Athena, Poseidon, Greek mythology stories yeah. that you'd read, you know, in school or in a classics class in college. Right. So tell tell us what's going on uh, in that poem and and kind of what are some things to to really focus on in that poem because that's another one that I really liked oh. just the way it was laid out and how this how it was written. So tell okay. us a little bit about that one. Okay, that um, that began as a, a true experience, and I, I saw these tundra swans 
that were migrating and they landed on the lake where our cabin is, near our cabin. And uh, I grabbed my camera <laughs> and went to the other side of the lake and, and tried to take a picture. And of course, these are wild swans. They don't come toward you thinking you're going to give them a crust of bread. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> they're very, they're wary, you know. And so, so I had to approach very slowly and I took several pictures and it was just one of those magical kind of moment, moments. And, um, and then I, I later wrote a poem about it, and I'm glad you said that about, you know, a, a, a Greek myth or a legend, because I do mention the children of Lear, which is an Irish legend, mm -hmm. and where the, all the children were turned into swans by an evil stepmother, and they had to fly uh, over the, you know, the ocean for 300 years, I think it was, until finally the spell was broken but when the spell finally did break um, the children uh, emerged from the bodies of the swans but they were now old and so that's that statue uh, that you see in this collection of the children of Lear where the, the, the swans are s soaring high mm -hmm. and the children now elderly falling to the ground. Yeah, so I, I did merge here again my Irish experience and the wonderful legend of the children of Lear and these wild swans who had uh, landed just for a short time mm -hmm. near near me. Yeah, that's great. It, it, was, a, it was a great poem and I, I really Thank enjoyed you. it very much. I want to ask you, um, in your collection, Looking for Ireland, how did you determine which pictures to use and which poems uh. to use. But was it a process of, of really, did you have to whittle things down or did you know kind of from the outset, I, I've got five or six that I really want to use and then maybe mm -hmm. I'm going to fill in the rest. How, how did that process yeah, work? Because I could easily see your book being 300 pages with, with so much that, that yeah, you've seen and right, experienced. Right. Well, and first off, I wanted a chat book and I wanted a different kind of chat book and I wanted to have photographs that would complement, not necessarily be taken for that particular poem or written and and that's that's kind of the, the the movement I also think that if people have trouble with poetry pictures can pull them in as well mm -hmm. and I, I just really wanted a different format for my chat book I most people start with a chat book I kind of am ending with a chat book <laughs> <laughs> um, and the pictures um, I think I think what I did was I knew that it was going to be a chat book, so it had to be small. So around 20, 21 poems, mm -hmm. something like that. And then I started looking at my pictures that I'd taken in Appalachia and pictures I'd taken in Ireland. And then this whole idea of, a, of walking from one country to another, uh, maybe crossing the Caledonia Mountains that once crossed the Atlantic Ocean millions of years ago. Um, and so I was, it was just a kind of an intuitive way of matching up pictures with poems, and it might have just been one line or one word that I would say, well, I think I have a, po a picture to go with that, or um, this poem might go with that. And I will say I have a wonderful graphic designer, and her name is Liz Ford. And she, she helped me decide when I couldn't decide. And, she, and her layout is beautiful. I just love how she blended one picture onto the next picture or uh, back to the children of Lear, the, the statue in the Memorial Gardens in Dublin. She did a cutout of the photograph that I'd taken so it has a 3D effect. Yeah. So all these things um, helped pull it together, uh, helped me decide what order I wanted the poems to go in, and then when I realized that there would be a, a journey, a pilgrimage, there's that midpoint where you leave the path, and then you end. There's a gate on the other side, and that's Ireland. So that's kind of like the to take the reader to the to the next country. Nice, very good. <laughs> it's, it, it's a great collection. I, I loved you. everything that was in it. Loved the pictures and the poems. Thanks. Um,
But I want to ask you, too, about your thriller novel, The Silver <laughs> Tattoo, because that's also set in Ireland. Uh, yeah. Um, shifting gears just a little bit, shifting genres even. Right. Um, you've got a great character in this story. Her name is Leah Howland. Yes. And she has, she's an interesting character because she has this dichotomy that she's dealing with in the book. She's a survivor, mm -hmm. but she's also a deserter. Right. So tell us a little bit about her and, and what's happening to her as this thriller unfolds. Wow. Okay. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> a lot is happening to her. Um, she tries to escape uh, her husband, and we can't go into that because that's part of the, the main point of the novel. Uh, she deserts her husband after three years of marriage and goes to Ireland to study and there she encounters a stalker and she's a very complex character and that's the way I like her. She, she's very likable but then there's times that, that the reader does not like her. She, and I think that's true with in real life, you know, there's wonderful things about people and then you find out that they burn down somebody's house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, she is wrestling with her own emotions, uh, her desire to get away, and on top of all that, and of course it is a thriller, uh, your protagonist is never safe very long in a, in a thriller. Uh, she encounters this stalker who pers pursues her and she doesn't know who it is. And actually she, uh, I think she discovers that she's tougher than she ever thought she could be, uh, whereas most people might just throw up their hands and take the next plane home. Something uh, inside her, like steel, comes out, and she per pursues danger, you know, which I would never do. <laughs> yeah. I would get on the plane and go back home. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but, but she is a, a steely, likable, um, conflicted person and um, I, ju I just I just really really love the character of Leah mm -hmm. does she's, that she's does that help you yes yeah, she, okay. she's great okay. yeah, she's a great character and uh, and, I, and I knew that was a question I did I'm so glad that you didn't give away the the, the, yeah. the, the twists of the story because right. it's so good uh, but I know that book was out for a while and then you went back and did sort of a prequel and we mentioned this at the beginning called night terrors which was actually a short story prequel to The Silver Tattoo. So right. in, in terms of when The Silver Tattoo starts, how far back do we go with Night Terrors, and, and, and what, what is being set up in that short story as the prequel to what we see in The Silver okay. Tattoo? Okay, in The Silver Tattoo, Connor is Leah's husband, the one she deserts. And he has, uh, oh, uh, not supernatural abilities exactly, but he has the ability to kind of read minds or know things, you know, people that, uh, oh, a little bit of clairvoyance, I would say, but it's not all the time, okay? And I thought it would be wonderful if we could revisit Connor as a child and see what he was like as a child. So I do take the reader back to when Connor is three, and yeah. he is uh, suffering from night terrors, which a lot of children, uh, you know, get. You know, they wake up after they've been asleep maybe 20 minutes, half an hour, and then they, their eyes are open, they're wide awake, but they, they are seeing something that the parents can't see and it's terrifying them. And the, my daughter had night terrors, so that's why I related to that. And you can't wake them up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. they look at you like you're in their nightmare. Mm -hmm. And so I thought if anybody would have night terrors, it would be calmer. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, so that was that was uh, that was actually a real challenge and also uh, not fun exactly, but um, oh, immersing myself in into a different. I had it in a different time frame. It had to be, you know, a couple decades before, you know, because he's three in this in the prequel, and it sets the reader up for the silver tattoo and where Connor is now as an adult. Mm -hmm. But you get a, here I keep using that word window, <laughs> you, you, ha, you get a window into his previous life as a child and 
and did his parents know about yeah. this special ability and did they know and yeah. and all that comes out in that. Mm -hmm. and, and then when you, it's interesting because when I read that after having read The Silver Tattoo, it filled in a lot of gaps for Connor's oh. behavior. I, I okay. felt like now I see, not that I totally, ex and I don't want to give too much away, right. not that it excuses his behavior in The Silver right. Tattoo, right. but in, I think it humanizes him. It, give, it makes him sort of a more, a more humanistic kind of character because you see this started a long time ago. He just didn't have yeah. this sort of suddenly happen when he married Leah or before right. he married Leah. Right, right. And it was interesting, readers would tell me what they liked or didn't like about the book, and, and, and many times they would say, I wanted more about Connor. Yeah. You know, I really <laughs> wanted more, and I, you know, I, you know, it's fascinating what you discover from your readers. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, you know, that would be, that would be uh, intriguing to go back and, and relive his early life with, with the readers. And so, so that's what I did. Very good. So in our final moments with you uh, today, Laura, if uh, someone wants to get in contact with you to talk to you about uh, your poetry collection, Lake Effect, to talk to you about Looking for Ireland, your chapbook, or to talk to you about The Silver Tattoo uh, or the short story Night Terrors, which is the prequel to The Silver Tattoo, how can they get in contact with you and where can they get copies of your books? Okay. Well, those are all great questions. <laughs> 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 I'm happy to say that Empire Books here carries it and the red caboose and tamarack and um there's uh there's a the gallery store in oakland maryland carries it now and of course it's online and in e this is not an ebook i just didn't want to uh, make this into an ebook because poetry typically doesn't translate in, into that format mm -hmm. uh, but the all the others are ebooks and and print books as well so you can do that i have a website uh lauratracybentley.com and uh my uh the wizardry of liz ford once again <laughs> she she helped redesign my website and so you can contact me there i've had a lot of people contact me there for book clubs or you know, uh, speaking engagements or conferences, things like that, or just ask me a question, you know, so that that's a good place to connect. Uh, otherwise, uh, you'll have to meet me at uh, River and Rail Bakery for a cup of coffee. <laughs> Very good, very good. So if people want to <laughs> askew away from the social media, they can meet you face That's to right. face. That's right. I'll be happy to meet you. That's great. Laura right. Tracy Bentley has been our guest today on Chapters. We've been talking to her about her latest book, her latest chapbook of poems, Looking for Ireland, an Irish Appalachian Pilgrimage, which is both a poetry chapbook and an art book, and also her new novel, The Silver Tattoo, which is a psychological thriller set in Ireland, and also talking to her about Night Terrors, which is a short story prequel to The Silver Tattoo. So Laura, uh, it's great to have you back on Chapters. Thank you for being that first guest all those years ago. <laughs> all right. And uh, it's, it's so good to have you back, and congratulations oh. on everything that you've been well, doing. Well, thanks. And it's it's my thrill and pleasure to be here. So now when you do your 200th episode, you got to give me a heads up next time. <laughs> yes, yes. I should say thank you for that, too. Thank you for, for, for getting a nice quote about Chapters, yes. No. And that it, was spur of the moment. So I know, but isn't it wonderful how, how things have grown and, and how it, it has continued? It is. It's, it's been amazing. And this will be around a long time, and and uh, so proud to be from Appalachia and from Huntington and, and share uh, ideas and thoughts with other readers and all the authors you've interviewed. You know, you know what a treasure house. It's been, it's been, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. It's been a lot of fun. Okay. So thanks, Laura. All right. Thanks, Elliot. We also want to take a moment to say thanks to Chris Dargish and the staff and management of Empire Books and News for providing our on-site support and assistance today. We encourage you to come down to Pullman Square and Empire Books and News and pick up copies of Laura's books. And many of the other author, editor, and publishers that you've seen featured here on the program have their works for sale right here at Empire Books and News. So whatever you're looking for, come down and talk to Chris and her staff, and they can get you taken care of right here at Pullman Square in downtown Huntington at Empire Books and News. And if you'd like to reach out to the program with a question, comment, or story suggestion, we've made that possible to you through a variety of social media platforms. The first way you can do that is through the email address that's right here at the bottom of the screen. Please make sure you leave your name and, and where you're writing from in that correspondence so that we can keep track of that correspondence. And we know many of you have done that, and we appreciate that so very much. If you're a YouTube viewer and you want to go back and watch some previous chapters, episodes from our three-plus years of tapings, we have an Armstrong one-wire page. 
uh, through YouTube. That features a chapters tab. That address is right here at the bottom of the screen. It's youtube.com backslash Armstrong One Wire. From there, just click on the chapters tab, and you can go back and look at all of our author, editor, and publisher interviews archived for you there as well. And if you're a user on Facebook, we have a chapters page on Facebook. All you need to do is go to facebook.com in the search bar type chapters TV show and our most recent author, editor, and publisher interviews are archived for you there as well. You can interact with viewers of the program, use all the Facebook feature tools that are available there uh, to leave comments and likes and reposts and all the different things you can do uh, with Facebook with chapters. And we know many of you have used those social media platforms to stay connected with the show and to uh, share the interviews with others and we appreciate that so much. So please keep doing that and please keep those comments and feedback coming. And that's going to do it for us this time on Chapters, but please come again next time. And in the meantime, stay tuned to this station for news and views that impact you and your community.